I want to talk about something called the rule of 72. And what the rule of 72 does is it gives you an approximation of how long it will take to double your money. And the way the rule of 72 works is the years to double your money is approximately equal to, so let me use some squiggly lines here, is approximately equal to 72 divided by the interest rate. And let's, let's try a couple of these. Um, how long is it going to take your money to double at 6%? Well, if you use the rule of 72, it's going to be 72 divided by 6. It's going to be approximately 12 years. And if we went over here on the calculator, we could try and figure this out. All right, we're going to, we know the interest rate. The interest rate is 6%. And we can put in as a present value 1. Actually, let's put it in as negative 1. And we'll put in the future value as 2. So you're doubling from 1 to 2. And you could put in 1,000 and 2,000 or 10,000 and 20,000, it doesn't really matter. And if we compute n, what do we get? We get 11.89566. So quite close to 12. Okay, pretty reasonable. Okay, let's try try another one here. If we use 8%, again, the rule of 72 would tell us take 72, divide it by 8, and that would be approximately Let's see, 72 divided by 8, all right, it's equal to 9. So let's see what we have here. Again, let's um, work this out. All I have to do is change the interest rate. The present value and the future value are just fine. So if I put an 8 here and I say compute n, I get 9.006. So uh, quite a good approximation there. So this is a pretty good rule of thumb. And the reason 72 is a good one to use, there are a couple of other rules, rule of 70, rule of 69, which may actually be a little more accurate. But the rule of 72 is good because a lot of things divide nicely into 72. 4 divides into 72, 8 divides into 72, 6, um, 12. There are a lot of numbers, 9. A lot of numbers divide nicely into 72. And that's why it's a popular one to use. And it, it, it's, it's, it's a great one to know because if you're taking a test and they may ask you how long does it take your money to double and you've worked out the problem correctly using the financial calculator and you're not sure if you're right, you could use the rule of 72 to say, does that make sense? They've told me, you know, um, I worked out that uh, at 6% that it's going to take 15 years for my money to double. Well, the rule of 72 says it should take 12, so maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should go back and check. Now, let me pop up a little uh, spreadsheet here where I've actually worked this out. This is actual the actual number of years it takes for your money to double, and I just use the formula to calculate the number of periods at the interest rate A4, um, zero is the payment or the annuity, so I put in minus one for present value and two for future value. And I just did it for different interest rates. And so for one year, uh, or an interest rate of 1%, it takes uh, a little over 69 years for your money to double. The rule of 72 says it takes 72 years, so it's not a great approximation here. It gets a little better at 2%. From 30, uh, 35 is the actual number. 36 is the guess. And as you move along, you get better approximations. 3% is better. We saw that 8% was really good. Okay, 9% is, is, is good. Um, even here, it's still pretty good. It, you know, at 10%, it's 7.273. Rule of 72 says uh, 7.2. So, you know, we can scroll down here and we can see that, you know, there are interest rates where it's not quite as good but it does a pretty good job it's a pretty good approximation and I have to admit that some days when I'm I'm wondering how much money I'll have in re my retirement account 
I sometimes use the rule of 72. It's a little mental exercise where I'm walking around and I think if, if I'm earning 6%, my money's going to double in 12 years and it's going to double again in another 12 years. So in 24 years, it'll um, increase four times. So you can get a, a guess as to how much money you'll have in your retirement account. Okay, I don't know how often uh, people like to do those things, maybe because uh, I'm interested in finance, I like to do those calculations. But it's a nice rule of thumb to know. It comes in quite handy. It pops up on, on some tests that uh, you'll take in introductory finance classes. But even in more advanced finance classes or on the CFA or CFP exam, if you were doing a calculation, um, being able to do this approximation might help you to check to make sure you did it correctly.